Welcome back to the Teams Insider podcast. This week we are going deep on bookable desks. We have product manager Evie Grimshaw and she takes us through what bookable desks is, how it works in teams, how it works in places and how to get it set up in your environment. Many thanks to Evie for jumping on and explaining it all and also many thanks to Pure IP who are the sponsor of this podcast. Really appreciate their support. On with the show. Hey everybody, welcome back to the podcast. Excited for the conversation this week. There's been a lot of conversations around uh, bookable desks, both from places and from teams, and uh, I've got Evie to try and help us decode it. Thanks for joining, Evie. Do you just want to give us a little bit of uh, about your role and your background? Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Tom. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here today. So hi, everyone. My name is Evie. I'm a product manager here on Teams Devices. So I work on Teams panels, which is the calendar hallway display that sits outside conference rooms. Um, and I also work on Teams Book Cool Desk, of course, which we're here to talk about today. And a bit about me, um, I'm actually about two and a half years into Microsoft. I actually interned here, loved the team, and decided to come back full time and have been here ever since. Awesome. Well, thanks for taking the time. And this is a really interesting topic. Like, I feel like a lot's going on in this space at the moment. Um, and Let's let's start with that conversation of we've got places and ability to book a room and book a desk clump and soon book a desk. And we've got teams where we can plug in and auto reserve kind of book a desk. Uh, Are we talking about the same thing across those two products? Yeah, great question. Definitely top of mind for many people. So it is one end-to-end integrated solution, 100%. So Places, which I'm sure many of the listeners here will have heard about, is a really great product for the return to office and hybrid work journey. It helps you coordinate who else is coming in. It helps you view a floor plan, see where things are if you're not familiar with it. It helps you book a space in advance. If you know, you're a planner and you know you want to be sitting in a specific area or booking a specific room, but what about once you're physically at the desk and you're, you're in the office and you're plugging in, what happens then? And that is where Bookable Desk comes in to really complete that end-to-end experience and that last mile in the return to office journey. So we can offer both a better end-user experience, like you were just saying about automatic reservations and things like that, and also better admin insights as well to understand how that desk is truly being used. So definitely one end-to-end integrated solution. And with both, you can truly have the best desk booking experience. Awesome. And when Places launched, it wasn't, it was booking desks, but it was really booking, uh, clumps isn't the right word, is it? What's the, what, the, the there was yes, a word from Microsoft. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. So, yeah. Like, but, but now it's been announced that coming is down to the individual desk. Is that right? Yeah, exactly right. So we did launch with desk pools or workspaces in exchange, and those had actually been around for, for quite a few years. But we quickly heard the customer feedback around being able to book a specific seat was really important. People don't just want to say, I booked one seat, you know, in this area, but I booked that specific seat, you know, the one by the window, which I really, really want. Um, And for admins as well, being able to understand that granular insight of how each desk is being used is also really important. So the resource accounts and the places experience released back in the fall actually announced at night. And coming very soon, all of the bookable desk features will also be releasing. Awesome. And, and and the kind of, I think to most people, the I can go into a tool, i.e. places and book a desk sort of makes sense. But Teams brings some kind of secret source to it in terms of if you're plugging into a, a monitor or a USB device on the desk, that's where kind of it gets clever and it can ad hoc. But can you kind of take us through that story? Yeah, for sure. So... As we were talking about, places really is great for planning in advance and figuring out when to come in and all those great things. But, you know, if you're if you're not a planner, if you forgot to book that desk, you know, it was a last minute decision to come into office, you know, you then have to remember to do that once you're there. And then there's a question of, you know, what desk am I at? You know, how do I actually reserve the desk, right? And you just want to get your day started. You just want to start your work day, right? So with just that plugging connection to a peripheral on the desk, such as that monitor or to that docking station, which has the monitor connected, Teams can automatically reserve the desk for you so that you don't have to worry about it. And because it's based on that plugin as well, it's it's just embedded into that user flow. I think everyone probably, at least the vast majority of people, 
are plugging into a peripheral on that desk to have a better experience in that workday, to have that second screen, for example. Yeah, when you're super, you're super the common these days. You see the yeah. kind of um, USB-C driven monitors and, and that's how you plug in. Like you say, you're, you're naturally going to plug in because usually you're putting power and you're getting the second mm-hmm. display. So it's a really common scenario. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So we're just embedding into that normal user flow and user habit. So there's nothing extra or new that, a user needs to do to remember to do it because by just making that connection like normal, we can take it from there in terms of automatically reserving the desk for you, as we just mentioned. Also notifying you if you're sitting at a seat that's already been reserved. Like if you reserve a desk right ahead of time at 9 a.m. and you're running a few minutes late, you no know, traffic, things happen, and I sit down at your desk, when you come in, you're going to have to, you know, look at me kind of awkwardly and say, hey, do I ask Evie to move or should I just, you know, give up and go find a different desk? Like, that's really awkward and wastes your time also. So yeah. there's that plugging connection. We can actually notify me in this scenario and say, hey, this, this desk is already taken. You need to move elsewhere so that when you come in, you know your desk is free. Um, and then even more so, we can update work location for you automatically. And on the admin side, we can provide admins an understanding of how those desks are really being used because it's based off of that plugging data, which is, you know, the truest signal of desk usage, right? So lots of That things. makes sense. That's awesome. How So how as an admin or as a company do I get from, I've got 50 decks with USB-C monitors to Teams understanding what that desk is? How's that jump made? Yeah, great question. So first off, this is relying on one, the hardware that you already have. So there's no new hardware you have to deploy or anything like that. It's leveraging the monitors you already have in your in your office. And second, it's reusing the apps you're already using today. So the setup piece and the management piece is all in the Teams Rooms Pro management portal, which I'm sure many people out there with Teams Room devices are already in that portal on a daily mm-hmm. basis, right? And then it's also just leveraging the Teams desktop client. So the software is already being used by so many people today. So then in terms of how this can get recognized, it's all based off of a mapping. So there has to be an association of the peripheral, the monitor on that desk to the desk. And that mapping lives in the Pro Management Portal. So to kind of break it down even further, because it's like, cool, the mapping, what does that mean? So essentially, the first piece is we need a resource account. So in exchange, there are resource accounts, um, such as room resource accounts, which is what Teams rooms use it. So sure, yeah. many people are familiar with that. But there are actually additional resource accounts, which has kind of been living, you know, behind rooms, which are workspaces or desk pool accounts. And then the very recent addition of individual desk resource accounts. So first, we need to have those accounts because that represents what's being booked is the backbone of the feature. But then the next piece is that peripheral and being able to uniquely identify that peripheral. So there's a few ways that this could happen. We can actually surface a peripheral for the admin automatically once we're confident it's an office peripheral, right, and not Tom's monitor at home or anything like that. Um, but an admin can also collect the information themselves. So we have a script that an admin can run, anyone can run, will collect the information for you, and they'll make this association between the peripheral and the desk in the pro management portal. And that will allow the team's desktop client to recognize where the user is when they make that connection to the peripheral. That's awesome. So, so, so one model is... I go and proactively do it with a script. I plug in, I get, grab the user, the, the, the device information, that script that you provided pushes up to the pro management portal and magic alignment can be done there. And then the other mm-hmm. option is is, 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 it, is it similar or the same as the BYOD discovery, essentially like multiple people have plugged into this device, therefore I understand it's shared and I, I believe it's aligned to this desk or room. Yeah, so that's a great point. That's something that we have coming very soon, which we're really excited about. So what we have live today and, and people would probably see in their admin portal today is a bunch of peripherals discovered. And that's because once we've had enough unique users use a peripheral in your tenant, we're confident it's an office peripheral. So we'll surface that for you. But as you just mentioned, Tom, we're also working to take it one step further around how can we automatically associate that peripheral for you to the resource account in case, you know, you have a bunch of desks and you don't have the time to do the PowerShell script, right? And as you were mentioning, it's it's similar to how BYOD Rooms is doing it, where once we've had enough unique users book the desk and then use the same peripheral, we will make that automatic association for you so that you don't have to worry about it. You can remove it, edit it. Of course, you're in full control, but we'll take yeah. that first step for you so to reduce your vandal effort. 
That's awesome. And, and again, you said it, but like we're we're not. There's no new hardware or software in the mix here. So you you've probably already got the Docker device on the monitor. Your users are probably using Teams if you're in our world. And, and the Teams client is doing some clever stuff. So like the notification you mentioned there about you sat at the right desk or you sat at the wrong desk, that's using Teams as an interface to, exactly. to give that message. Yeah, all based in the Teams desktop client. So we're automatically reserving you there. We're notifying you if the seat's taken. We're confirming your reservation that you're in the right spot if you did book in advance. Um, and as I was mentioning earlier, we can also automatically update your work location for you because a really big question in hybrid work is who's in the office today, right? Is Tom in? Can I get lunch with him? Right. So work location is really important. And people are probably already aware in places and Outlook and Teams, there's you can set your work location or plan your work location. But again, plans change. You, yeah. you end up coming in on a day you didn't expect to, right? And you have to then remember to go change that. And that's, again, more effort for you. So with just that plugin again, and with your permission, of course, we can automatically update your work location for you so it's accurate and that you don't have to worry about doing anything extra and just get started with your work day. And that, that's a feature I love, that it services the the physical location so that you can you know look up and say, oh, actually, Evie's in building two, floor three, exactly. and down to the desk if you want to share it. And you touched on something really important. There. Whenever we get to talk about location sharing, there's always the the, the privacy conversation so how does that work between what the admin chooses to let users do and what the users decide to do yes so it's a opt-in feature so first the tenant has to say i want this option for my users for them to be able to have work location automatically updated and then they can choose to set it you know for the tenant for a group or for a specific user they have full control just like many other policies that we have but even after a tenant has done that, the user also has to say they want the automatic updates. So the user also has to opt it. Because as you said, we totally understand that work location is very sensitive information. So the user at all times has full control. Even if a tenant has said, I'd like this for my users, the user will be in control of whether they want the automatic updates and also whether they want to share their location. Because perhaps as well, I don't want to share down to my specific building. I just want to share I'm in the office. And that's as granular as I want to get. They have the ability to set that in Outlook and control what gets shared out. Yeah, I think it's a really important option that it's going down to the user because some people are super comfortable. Yeah. Like I, I'm quite happy if people stay well on desk. And other people might not be so comfortable with like, actually, I don't want people coming up and yeah. <laughs> finding me nasty. Exactly right. Yeah, totally makes sense. So yeah, users fully in control the entire time. Yeah. That's awesome. So, and just to recap on where we are on the kind of journey now. So right now we've got the the the, the desk pumps, but not the individual desks. And you know, we're getting close now to the individual very desks close. coming. Is that right? Yeah, very close. So that's coming, you know, just in the next month or so. So really just right around the corner. Um, all of the feature set that we have for desk pools. So again, reservations, confirmation, work location updates, usage reports in the pro management portal, which is live already for desk pools. So if you have desk pools, Go try it out. It's already out there for you. Um, and then we'll also be adding that as well for individual desk booking also. So if you're on that journey with places, if you're evaluating that, we will have all these features available for you as well. That's awesome. And the analytics you mentioned there is a really good point. That's in, again, it's places and teams. So you might be looking <laughs> at it from a, a places portal point of view or from a team's point of view, but it's the same same data. Yeah, so that's a great question. So 100% in the sense that both portals are really giving granular insights on how your desks are being used. So Places Analytics is looking at things like your work location, it's looking at badge data, it's looking at occupancy sensors. Again, if you're hooking up all that information. And then the Pro Management Portal, we're basing off of that plugin data. So with both portals, you'll really get an amazing view of how your desks and buildings are being used. Um, and in the Pro Management Portal for desks, we can provide admins understanding of you know, number of reservations, the type of reservations being booked. So are those booked in advance or unplanned? You know, what are my user habits here? And then also reservation occupancy. So, you know, you might have tons of reservations and many hours of desk reservations, but how many of those hours are people actually plugged in and using the desk during those hours, right? It could be a hundred hours, but maybe only 10 hours when people actually- Yeah, people are booking, but not showing. Or, exactly, they, really not yeah. or, 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 or all the other- where and then going to a conference room all day, right? You know, so yeah. that can give you that insight. Um, again, really based on that true usage of plugin to understand how your desks are being used with reservations as well. 
Awesome, Igor. Thanks for decoding that. It's a really exciting area. And it's great to see the teams team and the places team working so closely together to kind of okay. solve this problem of pre-book and ad hoc books. Really good. Exactly. Well, thank you so much, Tom, for having me. Really appreciate it. Again, anyone out there who's looking at places, evaluating places, trying it already, definitely take a look at this solution as well. Again, to really complete that end-to-end -end experience for desk booking. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Thank you.